Hi, my name is Eric Willison, and I've been practicing law in Ohio since 1996, and during that time I've defended quite a few people accused of drunk driving. And I'm going to tell you today how a breathalyzer measures the alcohol in your system. There's something called Boyle's Law, and what Boyle's Law says, or is it Hoyle's Law, I forget, but it's one of those two, uh, that the amount of alcohol that is in the air just above the surface of a liquid containing alcohol is going to be the same as the amount of alcohol in the liquid itself. Now, why does that matter? That matters because in your lungs there are these things called alveoli. They are tiny, tiny little structures that are barely, barely covered by a very, very thin layer of skin. So thin that they allow air to go in and out of the alveoli. Also inside the alveoli is blood. The alveoli skin covering is just thick enough to keep the blood from going out, but not thick enough to keep the air from going in and out. So, if we know that the air just above the alveoli has the same alcohol content as the blood that is surging within the alveoli, then what we have to do is put the breath into a measuring chamber. And so what we do is we have these breathalyzers. You blow your breath into a chamber, and on one end of that chamber is a photosensitive film, and on the other end of that chamber is a light source. Now, we know from science that alcohol in air blocks light. So, when they shine the light through that breath sample, it's going to hit the photosensitive film, and the less light that hits the film, the more alcohol there is. And the more light that fits that hits the film, the less alcohol there is. And they can measure this to very, very minute gradations of very, very minute amounts. Now, that's the proper way that a breathalyzer will measure alcohol in your system. However, there is an improper way that can happen. And that is that alcohol in your mouth is going to be straight alcohol. It's not going to be uh, diffused with blood. So were I to take a drink of whiskey and swallow it, there would still be residual amounts of alcohol in my mouth. And if within the next 20 minutes I blew into a machine, it's going to send it skyrocketing because a very, very large amount of alcohol straight is going to be in my mouth, whereas a very, very small amount is going to be in my bloodstream. So when you read about some case where some guy has a 0.4 uh, level in a, of his bloodstream and he's supposed to be dead at 0.3, that's what's happening. You've got some mouth alcohol here that's showing up. Now the way that the Ohio legal system keeps that from happening is that the Ohio Director of Health has decreed that no breath test shall be performed on anybody unless they have been observed by law enforcement officers for 20 minutes, because 20 minutes is generally accepted to be the amount of time that it would take mouth alcohol to dissipate so much that it would not show up on the test. So, if you were to be stopped at 1 in the morning, and let's say that you were very near a police station, and they took you over to the police station at 1.10, and at 1.15 they told you to blow into their machine, and you blow into their machine at 1.15, the result of that is going to be invalid because they did not wait the 20 minutes. Now, usually there's enough time between the two, but this is one thing that DUI attorneys always check, is when was the person pulled over and when was the test done? Because if it was done too quickly, then that test might just be out the window. But that's how a breathalyzer analyzes alcohol. That's how physiologically the whole thing works. And if you have any problems with a drunk driving charge and you're in the central Ohio area, you can call me, Eric Willison, at 614-580-4316.